so our next session is about stock taking of uh, green procurement in india india in current gdp of about 3.53 trillion uh, us dollar and procurement spend of 700 billion dollar is a key player in green procurement arena even though per capita carbon emission of india is currently low it may increase with the level of development india has committed an action plan in this direction during cop26 let us hear from uh, hear more uh, about what is happening in india on green procurement in current session from mr sanjay kumar president board of trustee of asia specific round table on sustainable consumer consumption and production Mr. Sanjay Kumar has over two decades of governance and leadership experience in public procurement, uh, public policy, procurement, supply chain, and environmental and social sustainability. He has an extensive experience working with governments, NGO, academia, and multi agency towards embedding sustainability in end to end procurement and has been one of the leading voices from the region advocating the growth of sustainable procurement movement in India. He is currently president of board of trustees of Asia Pacific Roundtable for sustainable consumption and production and serves in advisory capacity on strategy advisory committee of sustainable purchasing leader council uh, based in U uh, uh, USA. He is also voice of sustainable procurement in health sector nominated by interagency task team of 10 United Nations agency, agencies. His recent publication as co-author includes second edition of UNEP's Sustainable Procure, uh, Public Procurement Guidelines and UNEP's Policy Brief, Driving Sustainable Throughout Public Procurement of in Infrastructure, both in 2021. His upcoming title, Understanding Sustainable Public Procurement Reflection from the India and the World, is a first comprehensive book on sustainable public pro uh, procurement, providing in-depth analysis on origin, nature, and reality of implementation of sustainable purchasing. As a presenter of this uh, session, I will now turn the session over to Mr. Kumar to begin. Thank you, Paul. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. You are very clear. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, I am not able to share my screen. Could you share it from UAE? So we can see your presentation on the screen now. Oh, oh, oh great, great. Okay. Okay, so thank you uh, very much for uh, to the ISM and the organizer you know, for giving me the opportunity to speak in this session. So uh, I think many of the things which I'm going to speak today has already been spoken by Mr. Bhatta and my previous speakers. So anyway, I will try to, you know, uh, cover up and try to see that there is no repetition. Yeah, but I'm not able to move the screen, ma'am. Can you, uh, you know, move the uh, slide from your end? Yeah. So thank you. Uh, so, uh, you know, as a consumer, you know, you have, we all have an important role to play where you are, whether you are an individual consumer or whether it's a government, because whatever decision you make at the time of procurement or selecting a product, it has an impact on upstream and downstream supply chain, right? Starting with the tier to supply, <laughs> to the you know, raw material suppliers, to the manufacturing, how the product is going to be manufactured, how the product is going to be transported and distributed, and finally it is taken, consume, taken to the, you know, uh, stored and consumed by the And finally, how to dispose, dispose, that will determine, you know, whether it is going to the landfill or whether it's going to the incineration, and depending on your disposal, you know, it will have the different environmental impact. Uh, next slide, please. 
and government you know government is a big consumers globally right if you consider oecd countries they consume roughly about uh, they procure roughly about 15 to 20% of the gdp in india we are, it is estimated that we procure roughly about 20 to 25% of the gdp in some other countries much more right so so in normal traditional procurement system what we do is we consider only the economic impact right you consider quality you consider delivery time you consider you know the small businesses and so on right but when you start considering environmental impacts of the product which you are buying right so uh, as you know was uh, uh, spoken earlier resource efficiency uh, uh, you are considering the ghg emission while you are deciding your uh, uh, purchasing decision when you are making a purchasing decision you are considering the diver, uh, biodiversity or you are considering you know uh, waste reduction you know how the waste could be minimized while making a procurement decision right when you start considering these aspects then we call uh, green procurement Uh, basically the economic impact and environmental impact if you are combining and taking into um, account while making a decision is the green procurement but the moment you start considering you know the health and safety of the workers so social issues working condition whether the work, uh, the product from where the um, product is being man- man- manufactured whether the factory owners and the workers over there they have uh, they are working in a good condition or not are they getting the fair wages whether the employee employed by the owners you know are they paying the same wages to the women employee and male employee and so on so once you start considering those aspects also into your purchasing decision right then all three combined together is called sustainable procurement so uh, you know we have moved from traditional procurement to green procurement and sustainable procurement but if you remember long back you know may in many of the countries even in the india and many parts of the world uh, taking sustain uh, social aspects into the procurement was very much prevalent much before the idea of green procurement came into uh, in 1990s or 2000 right uh, but uh, say for example uh, giving consideration to the smes uh, in, in india giving consideration buying from the uh, you know small and medium enterprises it, it is there in the legislation since 1951 in the india similarly in the other parts of the world you know in uk i think they have a legislation for giving preferences way back in 18 uh, centuries 18 or 19 centuries so social procurement was very much there right but you know when the uh, new economic theory started coming in and they started focusing on, only on the you know competition and uh, competition and value for money only in terms of money not in terms of what the society get benefited what the environment get benefited no then the concept of, of came uh, came only focusing on the you know uh, uh, price price became the you know primary criteria for decision making and then all those social legislation you know which was earlier prevalent those were in fact condemned right but now again the world is recognizing the importance of giving you know value to the social value equity inclusivity and so on diversity so again those things are coming into the procurement decision and the discourse of procurement next slide please so what are the key reasons for adopting spp in india right uh, as i said like procurement constitute a major part of the government expenditure right uh, it's estimated between 20 to 25% of the gdp so it's roughly about more than 500 billion dollars so this is a substantial amount if a government any government not only india any government is spending so much of money why can't this be used to achieve strategic goals what are the strategic goals of india we want to be you know raise the quali- you know quality of life of the people we want to est- achieve sdgs we have committed to the paris climate change deal so can we you achieve those goals using the procurement of money which we are already spending on buying products works and services the second essential is the humanity uh, in the entire world including in india we are facing triple clim- planetary crisis one is climate change second is biodiversity loss and the third is pollution for all kinds you name it right and many of the times we have spent much more money on you know uh, due to the impact of the pollution than on the you know preventing that pollution say for example 
on health india has spent roughly about 2 to 2.5 percent of the gdp right but on you know health issue right the people spend much more than 5 to 6 percent of the gdp on and once the you know somebody gets uh, um, uh, some kind of disease due to air pollution impact and so on third is increasing consumption demand uh, the people in India must know that the, in the, during the last 30 years, you know, the, India has gone tremendously, phenomenal, 7% uh, per annum, which is very good for the big economy like India. But it has an impact also. It has an impact on, say, it has seen that our population is growing, which was growing much earlier also, but our population is growing. As a result, consumption is growing. More and more people are shifting from rural areas to urban areas. Once the people are shifting from rural areas to urban area, then demand for the resources naturally, you know, get exponentially high, right? More demand for the school, more demand for the hospitals, more demand for the roads, and so on, name it. And the third, you know, third thing is people have disposable income. So the size of middle class population, you know, uh, in India is increasing tremendously, right? And it is estimated that by in 2050, you know, Indian middle class will constitute roughly about 30% of the total of all middle class population of the world. So just imagine all this thing, population, urbanization, and uh, uh, this uh, middle class, you know, all these are leading to high demand for the resources, you know, high demands for the products. Right? So when you need a high, um, more products, you definitely need the resources. But where are the resources? Resources are limited, right? <laughs> you don't have the resources. You have, uh, Mr. Bhatta mentioned you have only one planet. Right? And uh, I think everybody will agree to that, right? And there is a rising commodity price. If you look at the 100 years old data of the, you know, the commodity price, it has been rising, right? And the country like India, which is dependent on the import of, for the commodity, meeting the demands of the consumption, it's not a good sign, right? So. We want to raise the living standard of our people, right? But at the same time, we need to see that how do we achieve, you know, climate change goal? How do we achieve, you know, minimize the diversity loss? How can we control the pollution which is coming in the all forms? Uh, I think many of you must be uh, have read in a newspaper several times. You know, it has come in 2018, 2019. You know, in the top world populated uh, polluted cities, top 20. India is roughly about uh, 15 to 14 cities are from the India. Right? So just imagine what are the challenges we have. Next slide, please. OK, so as I said, like government understand these challenges. And as a result, you know, uh, their uh, procurement reform has been going on. It's a constant process, and it has been going on. So if you look at the sustainable public procurement framework in India, Many things has happened. You know, you have social legislation, uh, socio-economic policy on the left side. Then you have some of the things are coming from the constitution itself. Then you have a law. You have a uh, you know uh, other provisions. Then you have environmental policies, right? So if you remember, you know, in the very beginning, uh, uh, the madam said that when you are looking at the procurement, right, you not need not look only at the procurement legislation. Right. You can draw many of the things from the secondary legislation, which are coming from the socio-economic policy, which are coming from the environmental policies, right? And in India, we have a challenge that how do we, our legislation, you know, procurement legislation, social, socio-economic legislation, environmental uh, policy uh, legislation, they don't speak with each other, right? So one of the, our, that is our challenge, and, you know, government is trying to address that challenge as well. So next. So let's see, like, you know, it's a uh, more than a decade journey of, you know, India journey on sustainable public procurement. So uh, in sometime in 2009, 2011, we started, you know, talking about the uh, sustainable public procurement. At that point of time, it was uh, only green public procurement. And uh, awareness workshops were organized during this period, right? And in 2012, as a part of the, you know, Prime Minister, uh, uh, what is Committee on Climate Change, right? Uh, a uh, committee was constituted, right, to frame a guidelines on GPP uh, uh, at a national level. 
right? In that, uh, you know, the Ministry of Environment and, uh, and Forest, Climate Change, that they gave the project to the CII to facilitate the discussion. And that was headed by, you know, Mr. Arun Maria, secretary, uh, not secretary, one of the member of the planning commission who is uh, its office of secretary as well. And uh, we, at that point of time, fortunately, I was also there in the committee and we recommended uh, to have a legislation on green public procurement, right? But uh, our recommendation, you know, uh, was not considered and uh, somehow, you know, it got lost in the, uh, among the files in the ministries. Then again, in 2014 and 15, you know, UNEP is again, you know, they had a project on SPP EM. Social public procurement and uh, eco -labeling. So at that point of time, also you know, either uh, try to join the project, right? And initially we joined the project also uh, uh, in in the beginning. But after the first meeting, uh, you know, the government decided not to go ahead with the project, and the project was abandoned. So the second opportunity at the national level was lost again. And the third, in 2017, uh, the government of India has formed a task force on SPP. I, I, you know, one of the mandate of the task force is to come with the, you know, the draft national policy action plan, right, on uh, how to implement SPP on a pan-India basis. Right? And in fact, there are other two uh, uh, mandates as well, but this is one is the important one. And the task force, you know, since 2017-18, uh, they have been working on it, uh, but uh, you know, recently also, so, you know, few, few months back, we had a meeting of the task force in which uh, two items were considered, uh, you know, air conditioning and uh, you know, paper, right? But uh, uh, still there is a, you know, uh, lack of consensus and we are trying to build a consensus on that and probably, you know, some development will be here in the near future. And in 2019-20, again, Indian, again, UC Tracia is a, uh, you know, uh, one of the funding agencies, and they signed a uh, project with Indian Railway on developing a uh, guidelines on sustainable public procurement, and that project has been completed, right? And uh, some work is going on there as well. Next slide, please. So we have seen, you know, the things are uh, is not static, but it is moving and moving uh, in the right direction, right? And today, if you move around in the public sectors, uh, you know, many things are happening, right? Some of the people, uh, agencies, they are buying recycled papers. Say, for example, Indian Railway has been buying recycled papers since 2013. BWE, there are certain products, you know, which governments are mandated to buy as per the three of uh, five star ever BE uh, B energy star level. So that most of the government agency, they have been buying us for that legislation. And you know, the LED success story, I, I think many people must be aware of the Uzala project of government of India. This is a very good example of how the power of procurement could be used to bring down the at the same time, you know, bring many benefits in terms of GHG emissions, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, creating employment, in, term, in terms of, uh, creating, you know, good local economy in terms of creating uh, reduction in power saving money. So it's a very good example. As I said, like, you know, again, BWE energy started living and buying use of LCC is one of the concepts which we discuss life cycle costing that is being used in the railways as well. And DMRC in one of the project, they use it for the roughly about $500 million project. So LCC concept has been also going on. People uh, in the railway and in some other industries, they have been buying, uh, uh, you know, geo laid contained paints, right? Then many of the people, uh, you know, government agency as well as the private, you know, companies, they have been buying EPT certified computers, right? EPT is a, uh, you know, uh, type one eco level uh, developed uh, by the Green Electronic Council, which is used widely in uh, roughly around 42 countries. And India is one of them. You know, uh, again, EESL, have been buying electric vehicles for the use by the government uh, by the government in different ministries then you have example of many of the states in the highway and nhai they have been using plastic waste in construction as a substitute of 
bitumen. Then uh, again, we have a regulation also, and many of the governments are already using in CND carb, uh, CND waste that is construction and demolition waste in a road and building construction. That is how do you you know reuse the material and promote the circular economy. Then uh, lead and Griha and IGBC are creating you know especially for the building and institutional products, uh, institutional building. Uh, residential and institution buildings and uh, you know the growth of led and Griha and igbc if you see is a tremendous right people have been using the buyback clauses in their tenders and one of the question was in the previous session was what can we do of the you know it products so i will suggest use the buyback clause in your purchasing decision then the responsibilities shift not from the from you to the one who is supplying the member and the government already has a legislation on that, that all the major buyer, they need, all the major producers, they need to have the, you know, uh, recycling mechanism. So you kindly use it. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so what is happening in the private sectors? You know, uh, as it was mentioned, many of the companies and big names, right? If you go to their websites, they have a, you know, one or two pages right up on the green public procurement, sustainable public procurement, CSI and all. But we don't, I don't, I, at least I could not find the details. And when I speak to them, neither they give the details. So I don't have idea like what is happening inside, right? But I do believe that, you know, uh, they're also responsible, as responsible as the government. And, uh, you know, many of the uh, businesses, they are committed to the carbon neutral and uh, net zero goals. Uh, they have a target of 2050, 2040, and 2070s. And as uh, you know, it was spoken by Mr. Bhatta, flagged by Mr. Bhatta. So, uh, you know, uh, GAG emissions, right? Most of the emissions in the business and the government is coming from the supply chain, right? Scope 3 emissions, which constitute uh, more than 60%. And depending on the industry type, or which industry is there, it uh, goes up to 90%, right? So, no business, no government can achieve net zero or carbon neutrality goals unless they address the supply chain. And no one is better to address that issue than the procurement people and procurement function. So procurement people kindly rise to the occasion and grab this opportunity. Next. Yeah, so if you talk to me or uh, what is happening, you know, give me one page status of SPP in India, what is happening, right? So I try to apply the maps, uh, you know, the maps is a methodology developed by OECD, World Bank and so on, which measures the, uh, and they have a supplementary model on sustainable public permit. So I try to apply that uh, model into the, you know, based, uh, based on my understanding of what is happening in India, I try to apply it. And the maps method, uh, methodology, uh, basically the, it measures in, four uh, pillars like pillar one is legal framework whether the legal framework supports social public comment or not then uh, uh, institutions and tools uh, whether the tools are available third is operation market and fourth is accounting transparency and blah 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 so i try to you know uh, you know uh, again as i said based on my general i try to apply in many of the areas we have, have some progress, but we have a lot to do right and in many of the areas, we have we have not made any progress at all. So there again, we have a lot more to do, right? So next please, uh, next slide, please. Okay. So what is a strategy for India uh, in one slide? Like, so uh, um, you know, I advocate uh, ten things, ten things which India ne need to do at the moment, right? And uh, the first loop which you see, right? It's a genetic in nature, like decentralized approach, data-driven strategy, collaboration, professionalization, and enabling framework. And the second loop, which says uh, establishing cross-linkage, EPI, and procurement, you know, matchmaking, JED and JEM. Uh, JED and JEM has been copied together, sorry for that. Rebooting EcoMart. So these are specific to India, right? So let us discuss one by one, and then I will close my presentation. So decentralized approach, why do we need decentralized approach? Because uh, till now, 
you know all implementation effort has been focused at the national level but today we know that the state government they spend much more money on public procurement as compared to the national government right so their power of procurement is uh, you know much more than the central government put together right so we need to reach out at the you know the municipality we need to reach out to the state government who are you know some of the state government are doing wonderful uh, for example uh, punjab punjab has come up with the legislation in which they talk about the, the social procurement so what better could be you know to approach the punjab government and you know guide them in implementing the social public procurement so decentralized approach reach out to the municipality there are many municipalities which are big enough and much more than the states and many ministries right so why can't they be the you know champion of the social purpose procurement in india so apply that second is data driven strategy we are very lack of data if you are spend on this project you know at the government of india level we don't have any data right so we need to have data unless we have a data we will not be able to figure out which area we need to focus on right because you have once you have a data then you will have a materiality impact of the product or services or works that we are buying how much is impact then you will be able to figure out you know uh, where are the impacts where are the hot uh, hot spots and then only we will be able to focus on the hot spots third is collaboration you know sustainable public procurement uh, you know it's a multidisciplinary subject right you any procurement professional if they want to say that yeah, i want to do it my on my own he or she will not be able to do it and same thing, uh, thing is true for you know environmental guys or sustainability guys dealing the you know uh, environment or uh, social sectors they can't do it alone right so we need to work together right and we need not only need to work together the you know uh, horizontal level i mean we, Uh, within the department in a horizontal but we also need to work uh, work uh, collaboratively at the vertical levels as i said you know 60 more than 60 70% to 70% scope the emission is coming from the supply chain right so if you want to address any sustainability issue in the supply chain you cannot achieve any result without collaborating with the vendors because they are the ones you know your whole sustainability impact is coming from them so unless you work with them sit down with them and decide you okay uh, this is what i am going to do to reduce the sustainability impact or reduce the gg emission you won't be able to achieve any result so collaboration is the key and fourth is professionalization jason you know professionalized you know because you are not going to get you know the ideal condition environment Uh, in the near future right so if you want to sit down and uh, that uh, okay uh, enabling framework doesn't provide for it then probably uh, you, uh, you know you are not able to make much difference right so if you want to achieve that because you know it depends on the procurement professional how he or she is able to identify the opportunity in in any procurement decision say you are buying for a uh, for a computer for your organization do you see some opportunity in reducing uh, you know some imp- impact in environmental impact right? so depending on the you know uh, his or her knowledge about the products the impact he or she will be able to you know use that opportunity so and opportunity is just not only at the you know at the need identification at the stage but it, it is there at the all procurement cycles right so unless you professionalize the procurement professionals right he or she will not be able to find out the opportunity right and if they are not able to find out the opportunity to reduce the sustainability impact they will not be able to make any difference right so professionalize the procurement function and obviously you know it has been uh, said by many and in fact it is very important uh, especially for the you know people working in the public sector because unless you have a enabling framework right you cannot have it uh, you cannot do the sustainable procurement you may not be able to incorporate uh, in all the procurement issues but having said that just having a enabling framework will not lead you to any success right uh, as we have seen in india and many parts of the world in 2017 we came up with the gfr and we came up with the manuals which provide you know it's not very you know i will say that uh, very strong on the sustainability that you need to incorporate sustainability but it some provides it provides you know some leeway to procurement professional to use sustainability criteria and the procurement decision 
but nothing is happening i have not seen happening just based on the manual right so enabling frameworks okay but you need to provide them the tools right you need to uh, provide them the opportunity how to you know apply those criteria and how to what criteria uh, to be used for the different items and uh, what tools are available to make their job simpler right so those are things and secondly i'm uh, coming to the india specific point you know establish cross linkages what i wanted to he say here is like as i said our secondary legislation and our procurement legislation it doesn't talk to each other we need to make them talk to each other that will help you know procurement guys and use uh, you know secondary legislation for the purpose and third is epr extended producer responsibility in procurement use this concept this is a very good concept right so when you take the problem at the design stage right then the manufacturer of the product he or she is you know they know that this product is going to come back to them after uh, certain years of usage so they take necessary you know precautions uh, in such a way that it uses less resources it uses less uh, energy it uses uh, it and matching gem the good program like you know geo defect geo effect and geo defect and gem platform so how can we you know uh, uh, make them enable for one each other because once you start specifying criteria in the gem that the builder should be you know should be available on the jet platform right or they should have minimum silver uh, they have a grading so minimum silver gold platinum and so on so they can put some criteria over there then we booking eco mark as i said we need a tool right so uh, start working on the eco mark our eco mark has been a failure we started in 1991 but we hardly have any product for which there are seven so, minutes so interrupt you in between we are running out of time sir uh, we would like you to wrap up your session we am extremely sorry for this uh, request sir and interruption no ma'am this is last slide thank you okay thank you sir uh, this is the last slide okay sir continue uh, next slide thank you <laughs> and uh, uh, you know uh, we are organization based in uh, bangkok uh, like uh, this is a 25 year old organization we promote sustainable consumption and production in the asia pacific region and and production and consumption sustainable procurement is one of the element of sustainable consumption production so uh, we are having our 25th uh, you know uh, we call uh, our flagship event which is we held in bangkok from 21st to 23rd of november and i invite all of you to join the event thank you thank you so much thank you so for letting us know uh, and uh, uh, since we are not left with much time uh, the questions that are visible on the screen uh, we will uh, um, uh, i will just take one or two of them and then yep. uh, we can uh, break for uh, we'll have a tea break so the question number 1 is what are motivating factors to shift from normal public procurement to sustainable public procurement as well as green public procurement is this a development aspect or a political driven process uh, i think uh, you know uh, the rationale for adopting uh, sustainable or green public procurement is very much clear right you have a problem as we discussed we discussed in the very first slide right that uh, we spend uh, money a lot of money so why can't we use that money for achieving our strategic goals what are the strategic goals we want to achieve sdgs we want to uh, achieve based climate change goals we want to decrease the you know uh, inequality in the society we want to uh, increase the employment opportunity so if we can achieve those objective at the same time while delivering the material so what is wrong in that and this is a necessity this is in a necessity in the sense as we discuss you know more than 60% of impact is coming from the supply chain right so unless you incorporate you know jg uh, emission into the buying decision you will not be able to achieve climate neutral goals sir. and i you must be aware that india has declared to become net zero by 2070 right 
right? So we are working on the how how to achieve uh, those goals by 2070. But this is one of the instrument to achieve those. I'm not saying that this is the only instrument, but this is one of the instrument. And since we are facing globally, we are facing challenge of uh, scarcity of resources, scarcity of uh, you know the commodity, rising commodity price. So how are we going to manage? We have only one planet. We cannot, and we do not have a liberty. You know, you look at European countries and North American countries. They develop uh, during the industrial revolution, and for resources, they went to Asia, they went to Africa, they went to any other countries. Name it, right? But we do not. We don't have a luxury. Can we go to the America or can we go to the Africa and bring the resources from there uh, and uh, you know control them and get all the resources? We can't, right? So only option is to use resources widely. How can we do it? This is one of the options. It provides you the options. Okay? And, Thank you, uh, And uh, on the next question, I don't think say that it is a political diving process. It is a developmental processor, right? Because we are, uh, what we are trying to address is we are trying to address our development challenges. This is the challenges, right? Thank you. Thank you, sir, and um, uh, thank you, sir, for today's uh, session.